What's going on guys? Welcome along to yet another video. I'm Matt over at DSR and today I'm at somewhere new. Triumph Oxford taking out this Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. It's one hell of a name but is it one hell of a bike? Let's find out. This is my first time on a Triumph so I'm excited to see what it's got to offer. A lot of people on the channel have recommended Triumph. So let's start us off then looking at the engine on this. Like I said, this is the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. It's got 1160 cc with 148 brake horsepower and producing 130 newton meters of torque. Now, those are some good numbers. So I've got some good hopes, high hopes for this bike. This has got the new engine in, which is the T-Plane Triple. So from my understanding, the when it's in the lower revs, the bike's characteristics and the engine handles uh, like a twin and then as soon as you kind of get up in the rev range a little bit faster it will then obviously handle or the characteristics of the engine will be like the triple engine that it is throttle response is really nice and smooth in this even in sport mode kind of keeping it around at 30 miles an hour so in the low speeds this engine handles really nicely hopefully we'll find some nationals and see how it handles a little bit quicker Looking at the ergonomics of this bike then, I'm 6'1", 115 kilos, and the handlebars are really nice and wide and they're quite flat profile. The seat on this is really comfortable and the pegs are at a really nice kind of position uh, just behind my knees, so there's really no pressure whatsoever on my knees in my lower half. Top half, like I said, it's nice, it's comfortable, it's upright, and it's in a really relaxed riding position. The seat, so far, I've only been on it, 10 minutes or so but it feels very nice and plush always a, uh, a complaint area for me I find I'm a big guy uh, we do have a adjustable screen in front at the minute it's in its lowest position to raise it up there's a bar above the TFT screen and you literally can just pull it in its highest position going 50 60 miles an hour the wind is hitting kind of eyebrow level and there is a little bit of noise on the helmet. In the lowest position, it's kind of down to, uh, to a nose area. And you might be able to hear it on the mic. Even more wind noise, obviously, on the helmet. That's what I hate, coming to new areas, not having a clue where you're going. Use the right lane to turn slightly left. Another pet hate of mine is having the phone in my pocket where all I'm getting is the information for where I'm going in my head. So now we're up to 70 miles an hour. Screen's in the highest position. And I'd say there's an acceptable amount of wind noise buffeting on the helmet for any form of long distance touring. This bike is boasting Showa semi-active suspension, 49 mil upside down forks at the front. And so far, I've not played around with any electronics. They're kind of, they are what they were from the dealership. Uh, on this type of road, absolutely no dramas. Hopefully we can find some uh, back road B roads, a little bit more bumpy, and we'll see how the suspension handles. But so far, without adjusting anything, it's pretty good. Looking at the brakes department, we do have Brembo's, and we've got twin 330 at the front, 330 or 320, put it on the screen. I think 320, twin 320 at the front and a 282 single at the rear disc I've had no drama so far with the break-ins I like the initial uh, pickup on the uh, on the brakes just with the one finger as I'm starting to brake there's a good amount of bite there which is what I like Have a look what we've got down here. Let's pull over and have a little walk around. Standing on this kind of uh, off road hard packed gravel, pegs are in a nice comfortable position, handlebars aren't too low. It's actually a really comfortable kind of standing position. Clutch is super light, so you can definitely uh, enjoy this bike off road, that's for sure. Let's have a little walk around. Here we go then. 1200 Rally Pro 
in black. I think it looks really nice, especially with those, where are they, where are they? Those gold forks at the front there. We've got a new 21 inch rim at the front, Metzler Carew Street. Uh, there's definitely some form of uh, off-road capability with them. How much though? I'm not too sure. I'm definitely going to test it. Uh, like I said, I am on hard, compact gravel. Uh, no slipping yet. We've got LEDs all round along with the daytime running light. Uh, the big one that kind of goes underneath. Very recognisable when out on the roads. Cornering lights just underneath either side. Fog lights down the front. Crash bars either side of the engine and a skid plate along with a side stand and centre stand. All stuff that is definitely required if you are gonna start doing some form of off-roading. New design on the swing arm. They've made it lighter, but stronger. Uh, I quite like the design of it, a little bit different. Quite a sleek, low profile exhaust on the side there. As you can tell, it is quite skinny. Single-sided swing arm and shaft drive. A lot of uh, people have been commenting on some of the other kind of adventure tourist style bikes that doesn't have a shaft drive. Uh, they say it's kind of important to have. So, Triumph, I've got it on this. Underneath the rear pillion seat, we do have the capability for heated seat. That's where the button does go. And there is a DIN charging point, so your passenger can have uh, charging capability. Grab rails and a rear rack ready. Looking at the front, we have got a large seven inch TFT screen and it does have a DIN charging point down the side there. Unfortunately, this doesn't have uh, full map navigation, but it does have turn by turn uh, capabilities through the Triumph Rider app. Keyless ignition and then keyless fuel cap as well. The cool thing with the key is if you push this Triumph button, uh, this light here will go green just to let you know there's battery. But also if you push and hold it, it will disengage this key fob. So someone then can't activate the bike without you re-engaging the key fob. Just quickly taking off the seat to show you that the seat height of this bike is between 875 and 895 and that adjustment to take the seat off turn over is this bar here you're literally going to pop out of this top bit place into the second bit to adjust it between 875 and 895. i like the look of this bike from the side i'm just not 100 percent sold uh, on this front end a little bit of bug looking i mean i can't say much i'm pretty feral myself uh, but I think overall, as a, as a design, it does, it does look nice. But at the end of the day, just like my MT-10, it's not about how it looks, it's about how it handles. So let's get back out on the road and finish off this review. So remember, 895 is the current seat height. Me being 6'1", I am on tiptoes. It is a tall bike, 895. Me personally, I'd probably look at dropping it to 875, just so I felt a little bit more comfortable. So you do need to pull the clutch in to start this up. You've got a menu button on the right hand side and then on the left hand side you've got the little jog button to move around. So looking into the Bluetooth settings with... Turn that off. Looking into the Bluetooth options on this bike with the Triumph Rider app you've got navigation, music, phone, SMS, GoPro and intercom. So I believe you can connect your GoPro to the bike and then you can kind of turn it on and turn it off. Inside here is where you go and change your suspension settings for on-road. So you've got three kind of areas, uh, sport, normal and comfort, and then there's a couple of different kind of levels within each of those headings. I'll show you now whilst we're stationary. So there are, I believe, six different rider modes. And we start off at the top with rain, road, sport, off-road, off-road pro and rider rider is the one where you can go in and adjust the parameters uh, and i believe off-road turns off the rear abs but keeps the front on but adjusts it slightly for off-road and then off-road pro turns off traction control and abs so you can really have some fun let's do it then let's hit the open road again Obviously being the Rally Pro, you wouldn't expect anything else than this to handle nicely off-road. And it definitely does, throttle response is really nice. 
not going to catch you out that's for sure we do have a decent sized fuel tank on this we've got 20 litres so plenty of miles especially if you're going to do any off-roading not going to get caught short anytime soon looking at some of the other electronics then so we've got heated grips button on the left hand side we do have a heated seat on or the button sorry is on here if you've got heated seats obviously connected i do not so the button doesn't work quick shifter up and down and obviously it's something that's definitely needed for any real long distance cruise control So the quick shifter, there is a little bit of a lag kind of between the gears. If you are getting on it quite aggressively, if you're a lot smoother and you're kind of just progressing through the speed, then the gear changes are no dramas and the quick shifter works fine. This being the off-road variant, it does have say the 21 inch at the front. So handling doesn't seem to be affected but I've not really got into any real twisties to kind of uh, push it and test it. Oi! That learner just forced her way out, pushing this Mercedes over. Mercedes was not looking and almost took the bike out in front. You need to switch on, sir. And I bet he hasn't got a clue what's going on. Bet the camera didn't pick that up either. That Desert X almost met some uh, dirt on the inside of this dual carriageway. Whee! Engine in this is nice and punchy when you want it to be, and then really nice and smooth when you don't. Right now, very little vibrations. It's kind of just chilling out. And then when you want it to, she definitely livens up. So this bike isn't light, coming in at 248 kilos, but even with that 21 front, this thing handles really nicely, just flicks back and forth. I reckon definitely helped out by these large handlebars, wide handlebars, great for counter steering, just leaning on them. Now, I can hear you asking yourself, how much is this bike gonna set you back? Well, you've got three different colors, first of all. You've got white, black, and in the khaki green and i say that because there's three different prices for each of those colors so the base color is going to be the white and that is going to set you back 17,700 pounds this black is going to set you back 17,900 pounds and then the khaki green is the most expensive at 18,000 pounds i think the green looks really nice i really like this black as well so Hey, save yourself 100 quid, go for the black. I'm looking at jumping on the 1200 GT Explorer, which is the more kind of road biased version of the Tiger 1200. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle compared to each other. Different size, front wheel, that's gonna have a bigger tank to this. So we'll see if it makes a difference or not. So what we've learned since being on this bike, this thing handles really nicely. The engine is pokey when you want it to be, and then really docile when you don't, when you want to just kind of chill out and relax and just have an easy bike to ride. But then when you get in the twisties, it livens up. It is a tall seat, but luckily we can adjust it to go to 875. And it's got a really good fuel range on it. So, so far, honestly, there's nothing I don't like about the bike. So it's good, it's the first time I've been on a Triumph and I've got no real bugs, bears or anything so you know, Triumph maybe in the future on the old DSR channel I like with the screen, even in the highest position it's nowhere near my vision line so when I'm in the twisties I'm not trying to look over it or look through it it's just in that kind of perfect spot where it's low enough that it's not impeding my vision but high enough that it does a good job Quick shifter going down is super smooth as well. Oh, look at that. Triumph Oxford Premier Bikes. They also do KTM. It's just an easy bike to ride. I said, I think my only, it's not a concern for me being 6'1, but definitely a concern for shorter riders. I think even at 875, this may be a bit too tall. 
it's all down to your leg length. I know because this is the more off-road biased bike, this is going to be a little bit taller. Uh, and some of the more road biased ones are definitely shorter by another 20 mil or more. So if you're not going to be doing any form of off-roading, check out some of the road biased ones if you are on the shorter side. The exhaust's got a nice kind of little grunty sound to it. It doesn't have that triple whir which you uh, are used to hear on some of the other triple cylinders, three cylinders. Hold up, wait a minute. Well, ladies and gents, I'm going to finish the review there. Thank you very much for watching my first ever Triumph review on the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. If you did enjoy it, make sure you like the video. More importantly, subscribe to the channel. We have got review videos coming out weekly. And there's nothing else to say, but until the next one, ride safe.